That was up close and yeah. personal. Um, I've done many things in my past lives. I'm a magician. I currently work as a beekeeper. A art dealer, art artist. I'm going into 10th grade. I am a philosopher. It's a FBI agent for 22 years. I'm a county commissioner. I'm in the aerospace industry. A student and so far unemployed. I'm a fisherman. And that's what I want to be for the rest of my life. I am a refugee. I'm a disabled veteran. I am an active duty uh, soldier. I work for a homeless shelter. I'm a missionary in Haiti. I've done many things. <laughs> what should it mean to be an American? Um, wow. What should it mean? Ooh, that's a pretty tough question uh, and a pretty important one. I don't know. Is it a question of, of should? What should it mean? What does it mean? You'd think that would be something everybody would know right off the bat. I'm stuck. <laughs> An American means, oh, that's a wonderful question. And I so am glad that that's the question that you're asking as you go around the country. To be an American, I, I can't even think of no words for it right now. I have no clue what we're talking about. <laughs> should it mean? What should it mean? Oh my should mean whatever you want it to mean, right? <laughs> what should it mean or what, what does should it, it mean, mean to be, to be an, American? an American? What should it mean to be an American? There's no one right way to be American. There's no um, one right answer to a lot of questions in life. There's a lot of perspectives, but there are always goals. There are always ideals. There are things we strive for because they seem more ethical, they seem more fair, they seem more respectful, warm, supportive. Um, so those are the things I'm striving for in terms of thinking about should. What should it mean to be an American? Everything. Everything, nothing else. It should, it should, it should mean everything, and it, and it does, it does, sir. You should say the Pledge of Allegiance when the flag is up. You should respect our government, whether you agree or disagree. There should be something that, beyond pledging allegiance, beyond uh, just living in America, I mean, maybe there should be something. Love. Everybody should love. America should be love. Making sure this person, if this person is down, Help them up. Help that person up. Don't put them down. As an American, as, as Americans, we should do that. What it should be to be an American is to stand up for your rights and the rights of others. Because if you're not protecting your own rights, then maybe you should call yourself something else. Standing up for what you believe in. Supporting your country. I'm Republican and I do both those things. Standing up against injustice and fighting for your fellow man. Definitely should be able to consume anything that comes from nature. <laughs> I think of rebellion and revolution in a punk rock sort of, if this isn't working, then throw a stone at it, you know, like make it better yourself. So it's not just up and leaving to Canada, it's sticking around and, you know, it's tea in the Boston Harbor. It's, uh, it's something bigger than what people seem to Want to think. It should mean that people are equal and fairly judged in this country. It should mean freedom is a birthright. I guess I'm focusing on the what it should be. Um, 
And I'd have to say it should be that you're fear free from fear. People are, are terrified and there's no reason to be, thought, to be afraid and just take care of your own business and respect, be respectful of other people and we may have a shot. What should it mean is to never be hungry, to never be without anything that you need. Well, it should be a man. No job. I, th I think everybody deserves the right to have a job. To be able to work and earn, the big word, earn your keep. Not be given and not be come in with an attitude of you owe me. It's you owe yourself the privilege of working towards a better future. Quintessential American is that you're trying to improve yourself and you're standing in the world. To be yourself, uh, to be freaky. That's to be an American. We're definitely a freaky country. America is a country that celebrates like individualities. So for me, um, what's really important to be American, it's just to celebrate what makes us us. Well, we need to give that some thought uh, to begin with. Uh, where did we come from to begin with as Americans? Uh, how did we start? Uh, uh, basically, the first Americans here were already here when immigrants came in. So that's pretty much the way that I look at it. We're a melting pot here in the United States. And that's something that we really need to accept. Some people view maybe an American as a certain race or a certain group of people, um, a certain group of people that can speak a certain language or maybe a certain amount of wealth or a skin of their color. All in all, America was built on different groups of people and it shouldn't be associated with only certain groups of people. Being an American is being able to say your roots go back to the Mayflower or saying we got here two years ago, refugees from another country, and we are part of the American experience as well. You know, America should reflect the best of us, and the best of us is a whole wide range of different people. I think the diversity is very important to the creativity that this country has and to uh, the innovation that it's capable of and the ethos that it produces that leads the world. This country is served by people of all races, colors, and creeds. It is fought for by people of all races, colors, creeds. And that to be an American, you should respect those people, especially those who fight for us. And it um, doesn't matter what their differences are, and that you should be supportive of that, and that you should also have an open mind as far as this is America, we're the land of the free, and that should include everybody. We're... we're uh foreigners to this country because it belonged to the Native American people which we drove off, took away, killed, used term warfare to get rid of, starved them to death, took their homes away from them, took their gold mines away from them, and took their lands, belittled them, took their deal. So to be an American we should respect what we have, what's here, and, and the people that lived here before we did and the people that's that's coming. The immigrant is who made America famous with all right immigrants. Now. The only non-immigrant in this country is the people that we screwed royally were called the American Indians and their revenge <laughs> on us is the casino. So it's, uh, it's kind of hard to spell, I just can say it and you can't spell it. So. What, what does it mean? It means running weasel. It was my grandfather's name that uh, fought in World War I as a United States citizen who wasn't even a citizen because he was an American Indian, but he still went to World War I. With, he couldn't even vote, but yet he fought for America. That's how patriotic uh, Blackfeet were. Uh, they, they did uh, fight for America, even though they were not uh, citizens. Dedication to the uh, country, uh, as far as veterans, is uh, really highly looked upon on a reservation uh, if you are a veteran. Uh, so, you know, from that perspective that we have our own nation, yet we, we are uh, within a nation that we are willing to serve and uh, respect uh, the laws and uh, 
and yet try to hang on to what we have. People need to understand the difference between uh, uh, other nationalities. Actually, every... Respect each other. Okay, American is a person who lives here. Everybody came to America at some point from somewhere. Nobody belongs here. What should it be to be an American? Well, the obvious answer is that if you're here by birth, you have no choice in the matter. I was born an American, <laughs> and I'm very glad to be. Since I've been an American since birth, uh, I pretty much take uh, a lot of our freedoms for granted. Here I am, I'm an American citizen, not by my own choice. I just get plopped into this situation, and everyone looks around and goes, you're an American, and you better get with the program. And I'm like, uh, what is the program? A true American is from the roots, if you like, born in the country. Being an American does not mean being born in America. Uh, I was not born in America. I was, I was born in Mexico. I am an American because I became naturalized. Uh, but I'm also Amer an American because I've lived here for most of my life. Uh, one of my best friends who's here with us uh, uh, was, just became an American citizen recently and lived here for many years as a Canadian citizen, and yet I know he probably considers himself more an American than a Canadian. What should it mean to be an American? Um, that you live in America. And is there anything else to being an American that it should mean? Uh, um, I don't think so. We should love and care for everybody, first as American, and then bring our value of love and caring to the rest of the world. I think as an American, it means that uh, while we don't always share the same ideals, I think we can uh, want to do better in the world and we have a responsibility to do better in the world. Being American is a good thing, but if you can think globally and care about all people in the whole world, to me that would be exemplify what America really stands for, which is to be inclusive and to care about all people and the welfare of the whole planet. I think we should be going to a place where we are kind to each other, where we help our friends, our family, our fellow citizens in need. Um, I think we built up a lot of institutions where we can refer people places, um, but I don't think there's a lot of care there. What it should it mean is to be a good citizen, to be honest, to work hard. But also a person who respects the rule of law and works with the system when the system needs to be changed. I think there is something about that moral compass that makes an American an American. I think there is a feeling within America that we do the right thing. We are always shocked when somebody in America does the wrong thing. How do I define an American? Well, it's <laughs> the luckiest person on the face of the earth. We're very, very, very fortunate. Try and visit another country and you'll know exactly how good we really do have it. I see, I see America like art through eyes of an artist. I, I, I see all the, the great and beautiful things here and how fortunate we are to be a part of the United States. Oh God, we're just so lucky. I mean, we're just so lucky and we forget. We take it for granted. We just forget all the time. Sierra Leone, you know, if your mom, like what she does is raise goats or chickens or whatever she does, basically that's what you're gonna do because education is not free in Africa. Even if you're five years old, you wanna go to school, if your parents can't afford it, then you can. So here it's just this huge dream where even if your mom can't afford it, you have that opportunity. I've been in 38 countries, so I've seen poverty and I've seen wealth all over the world. I think being an American um, internally, in, inside the border of the U.S., I think 
Uh, we're the luckiest people in the world. We're affluent. We have a tremendous amount of space. Uh, people are friendly. There's a tremendous amount of innovation. People are, uh, are acceptable of different ways of life. I, at least that's been my experience. The statement that the United States is the greatest country in the world or the greatest country in history shows you the deep delusional state of the American population. First of all, transfer that kind of claim to any other context. Imagine uh, you're my parent and I'm an eight-year-old child and I come to you and I say, Daddy, I am the greatest eight-year-old in the world or the greatest eight-year-old in history. How would you respond as a responsible parent? Well, the first thing you should probably slap me, but assuming you don't want to engage in corporal punishment, the first thing is to say, little Bobby, you have to understand two things. One is there is no single greatest eight-year-old. There is no single greatest person. And number two, based on your performance to date, it's probably not you if there was such a thing. For me personally, um, the country that I love, that I'm so proud of, anywhere I have a chance to, to talk to people from other countries, I like to talk about the best of America. But I also am an American that has also witnessed part of America that I know that needs change. There are so many governments that operate in ways um, that aren't uh, effective. They don't promote, promote the best outcomes for it, the citizens. And so in many ways, you know, it feels very special and remarkable to be a part of this country. America is, to me, less of a place and more of an idea, the idea that all men are created equal. And it's a very powerful thing. I didn't really realize it until you go to other countries where people aren't treated equally. Being able to vote and living in a democracy is such a privilege. There are so many on this globe who have no rights of that type at all. And therefore, I think the responsibility begins with the individual citizen, but it certainly transcends upward to our representatives and to people in the education, to people who have responsibility for the next generation coming along and getting them to participate. Kennedy said it best, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. I think that that whole concept in America has been, has been lost. And I think a real American understands that it's important to to bridge that divide. It's important to to educate those in the process that they're not familiar with. And it's not it's not a, a political thing, Republican or Democrat or independent. It's basically an innate value of being an American that we really want to educate those that that don't know. The need for people to become better educated as to what civic responsibility really means. You know, and it's more than just going and voting every four years. It's becoming interested, it's learning, it's making sure that you are aware of what's going on. To be able to have, form an opinion, to try to read different um, pieces of information so that you get both sides of the story. I don't think you should just show up at the poll and just tick them off. Make yourselves aware of what's going on if you don't. Like, I don't know, learn the facts, probably. Like, watch the news every once in a while. It means to get involved in your government, to get involved in your country, to get involved with your people, your neighbors. Uh, it's your responsibility to preserve this country and to run the country. I think it's more important to consider yourself as a citizen or what it means to be um, a citizen of a nation. And for each nation those are different things. But to be a citizen in America, um, well, it means that you're part of uh, the process uh, of what goes on in society. Uh, you have to be an open person. Uh, you have to keep an eye on what goes on in the media, what goes on in the news. You can lock yourself up in your house and sit in front of the TV at home and never leave uh, and form opinions. But I think in order to be a meaningful American, i.e. a meaningful citizen, um, you have to be out and participating in your community and in your society. Uh, I think those things are where our, the, it's the foundation of this nation, the foundation of a democracy is an involved person. My word would be responsibility. 
that really being a part of a democracy is having a great responsibility put on you to be ethical, to be fair, to be informed, and to be engaged because we're responsible for each other. And our responsibility in this by the people, for the people, is to each other, for each other. It should be the case that Americans are a lot more conscious about the fact that democracy, which is what everybody here is proud of, means that you assume from the beginning that people are going to disagree with you and have a right to do it. Democracy doesn't make sense if you don't accept that fact. And that seems to be something that we're forgetting. And even I forget it. I can be extraordinarily partisan. And blah, 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 blah. But uh, if you really believe in democracy, you really have to have tolerance for other opinions. The freedoms guaranteed to us uh, in the Declaration of Independence and in the Constitution and its amendments go along with responsibilities and cannot be separated from responsibilities. And responsibilities involve directives. If you are going to be openly respected by others, you must openly respect them. That's the dictum that was put out there by the founders. To be American, you have to have, you have, to have respect to get respect. If you don't get respect, you won't get, have no respect. You won't get no respect. You can't give respect. What should it mean to be an American? It's, it's fairly simple to me. America means opportunity. I, I feel like there's, there's nothing that holds me back except for myself. And maybe that's American. The ability to, uh, to go as far as your, your ability will take you and your desire and, and your, your drive. It's that, I, it's that the drive just to be. I can't, it's, I can't put in the words, but it's just that drive you have, all of us have to live a better life. I think every single child that's born in America has at one point, some is really early, the hope for tomorrow. I just think that America's land of opportunity, but as of right now, I look at it and it's not opportunity for me. And being out of work for almost six years, well, it's kind of difficult for me. What should it be to be, be American? To be an American. A dreamer. Without a dream, nobody can help you. Your parents can't help you. Your teacher can't help you. The government can't help you. Not even God can help a person who doesn't have a dream. If you have a dream, just prosper. Like nothing can stop you here. Stop at nothing to uh, satisfy and to fulfill the American dream. I've thought a lot about this. I've thought about the American dream. I've thought about uh, being a true citizen. I've thought about, you know, being culturally aware. Um, and I think that in the end, you leave life as an individual. And I think that your individual values are the most important thing to being an American. I think it should mean to um, be creative, be innovative, um, that you um, that you can do it. <laughs> you can do it um, mentality that we're famous for all over the world. Always having that dream that there's something a little more, uh, never really being fully satisfied. There's a certain extent where you can be satisfied and you're happy with what you're doing, but there should always be a driving force, I feel, that helps push you to continue on and between just bettering yourself personally to bettering your community to bettering your country. If somebody's dream is different than yours and they're telling you not to do it, don't listen to those people. The Constitution of the United States, that, I mean, that's why we have it. That, that was the American dream right there. That's what we need to get back. We need to get back to the days of the Constitution where the Constitution mattered and that this flag matters, and it does. To be an American should be to honor uh, the core values that the country was uh, founded upon. Uh, to me, those would be uh, liberty, um, 
and justice. My roots go as deep into this country as its history spreads over the ages of time. Um, I am still finding my relatives that were the original builders and founders of this nation. And so what it means to me to be an American is to be a descendant of them, um, a receiver of all of the blessings that they um, established here in our country for us. To honor those people who shed their blood, no matter which side you thought that they were playing on, we walk with blood up to the bridles. No matter where I've stepped on this planet, somebody had to shed their blood for your right to exist on it. It should mean that we study and appreciate the sacrifices that uh, others have made for many, many years to get us what we have. And are still making. And are still making, yes. To be an American is pride. Well, I think, number one, you should be proud. I think to be an American encompasses a, a few things. Um, patriotism is certainly one thing, although that leads to another question, what is patriotism? Pride is very difficult to define. Uh, pride is within you, how you hold. For me, the pride of being an American is seeing the armed forces, the um, sacrifices that they make on a daily basis, and the fact that they do it well, they do it with honor, and um, to me, that's pride. To me, one of the things that really gets me is uh, at a ball game or someplace like that where you hear the national anthem played and people stand to salute the flag. Uh, it almost brings a tear to my eye sometimes because of the pride I have in our country. I get pretty worked up about it. I get a little tear in my eye every time I hear the Star Spangled Banner. I mean, I was in the military for six years active duty and 18 years in the reserves. And even now, uh, my kids and everybody else, if we're at a football game, basketball game, any kind of game, they play the national anthem. If I see somebody that doesn't stand up and put their hand over their heart, take their hat off, I, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> oh, pride's a tough one. Um, that's one of the big, big problems. I think uh, as Americans, we can be overly prideful and then sometimes we're not prideful enough now. In my lifetime, I've seen a big change in what America represents to people. I think people are not as patriotic. Unfortunately, wars usually bring that. And this last war hasn't done that. Um, not that I'm advocating wars. <laughs> but I see a different trend. But every generation says that, that it feels a little less than before. It kind of seems like to look at the old days or something, you know, history books, movies and stuff, people's got such a great pride. And like a lot of people now are just like so interested in themselves and everything and they're just not, they don't want really to think of the country as much. And being a young American, I can be honest and say that a lot of my peers have lost that sense of pride in our country and being that kind of person that is honorable and trustworthy. And I think being American is so much more than being from the United States of America. I don't think that people should feel, even though that there's problems with America, and not, it's not my country right or wrong, I think that people should think, I have pride in my country and all the good things that it's done. You don't just love your country blindly. You're not like just whatever happens in America, you, oh my goodness, but at the same time, you still in the end, you have that, that, love, of, that love of country and love of, of, what this, of what we're built on and what we can be. That's, that's what pride is. I think pride to me is something that is uh, an exalting of your heritage, your background, your experiences, but it doesn't denigrate anybody else's. Like I think sometimes pride can be seen as something you do sort of to move somebody else's experiences off the table. I don't think that's what pride truly is. Pride is saying, you know, my group, my experience has accomplished a lot in difficult odds, but so is somebody else's. Patriotism is a wonderful thing, and I think it's wonderful to be proud of flags. I think it's wonderful to be proud of our coins, our monies, have our 
heads of states and our history stamped on him. Um, national symbols are important, sculpture, statue, art, these types of things. It's what shapes us as a community. Our national anthem uh, is wonderful. Um, but I think it's important to consider that uh, while those things are wonderful, the essence of citizenship, I think, is, is this ability or this necessity that we participate in our community and participate in each other's lives. Be proud that we're Americans, but don't just be proud that you are an American. Further that, um, be an example to the world, be benevolent, be charitable, reach out, care. What should it mean to be an American? Freedom. I was just gonna say to be free. <laughs> One word, freedom. freedom. To live in America is to be free. Freedom. I think being an American is just freedom. A person stands for freedom, you know? A person who is, who is exactly. uh, down in a sense, if I can use the word slang, down with freedom, who wants freedom, represents freedom. I think that's what an American is. Freedom, security, protection. I just love it. If you're in America for any, any reason other than freedom, you're in here for the wrong reasons. I think it's important to focus on the reality of, of, of what it means to be free. Most of these concepts, freedom, equality, justice, we have a, a kind of intuitive sense of what they mean and why they're important. But when you try to work out the details in a complex, modern, large-scale society, you quickly learn there is no obvious definition. Freedom is probably the most, um, in some ways, the most important of these concepts to clarify. But one has to do it with a recognition there's, there's no simple definition of it. To me, freedom is the ultimate experience of life. The greatest thing that we as human beings have is our freedom. Freedom is when uh, you are not bonded or you are not uh, forced to do something. You uh, freely is just everything, just uh, how birds are free. They don't have any rules and regulations. They live their life according to them. Freedom for me means the ability to uh, uh, pursue any activity you feel that you uh, are uh, destined to, 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 to do. Like, uh, you know, if you want to get into uh, film, if you want to get into engineering, if you want to get into law, if you want to get into business, or if you just want to be who you are. To work, have a job that you want, to marry whom you want, watch whatever television show you want to. Freedom to me means that I can um, wear what I want and say what I want without like fear of the government and I can go to whatever church I want and yeah. America is freedom and people have, you know, we've had multi-generations of people who sacrifice in life, limb, property, uh, health, to, to not only have freedom in our country, but to provide freedom and democracy in other countries. We have sacrificed multi-generations to be America. America is not just something that that's here. Jack, you talk about freedom, but if you get freedom, then you gotta have responsibilities to make sure that the freedom exists. You gotta have rules that prevents discrimination against different peoples. My definition of, of freedom is idealistic, but also pragmatic. Um, freedom to walk down the street without being called a nigger. Freedom to walk down the street uh, without being pulled over by the police based on the color of your skin and basically for no reason. The freedom to come out here and walk up and down the street without being harassed because of my color. Uh, not have to worry about if someone's going to come by and cut my neck off because I'm on the wrong side of town. Wow, the 
first thing that comes to mind is uh, the freedom to do exactly what I'm doing right now. Staying here and, and, and even if there's only one of me, I would still be here expressing my, my opinion. And I think it's important for all Americans to do that. The first freedom starts with uh, internal freedom, freedom of the mind, freedom of thought. Freedom is up here. It's in the mind. And uh, you only gain it if you free yourself and liberate yourself from the constant commercial demands of people that want to sell you something, they want to sell you a bill of goods, they want to sell you a political position, they want you to adopt what, what they believe. And the world is full of people clamoring for that kind of attention and there's very little thinking going on. Uh, so in my mind, what it means to be an American is to think in a way that preserves the freedom that we all have a right to but we don't all accede to. I think that, that a lot of people are, are misguided about that, that they really don't think about what it means to be American or, or what it means to have that freedom. Because a lot of people don't really have that freedom. They don't take advantage of, of all of their possibilities. They're trapped in a job or a marriage or a family or a school or a, a neighborhood. I tend to stay away from the word freedom because it usually is extraordinarily sort of self-referencing. It's my freedom, the hell with your freedom. It's, it means a lot to be American because America is free and you can get everything you need here. But I, I feel like sometimes America ain't free. Our freedom is not being taken away from us. We're giving it up. I think that it's important before you question what it should be to be an American, what it is be, what it is to be an American. I think to be an American, what should it mean and what does it mean is a lot different. A lot of people would come away and say, uh, no, that's not the way it is. It might be the way it should be, but it's probably not the way it is. I think we're a country that um, has very grand ideas but falls short in some ways. Right now, it's, it's scary. It's like, it's like the dumbening of America. And we no longer have a say anymore. How we get back there, I don't know. I don't know if we're ever going to get back there, honestly. There's fear of financial stability or, or fear of security from terrorism, uh, you name it. I don't mean to be pissed off at it, but I am. I am upset at America. This is not the country that I fought for. Every generation thinks the generation currently coming up has their stuff less together. Um, when we were young, we were doing things. I, I even find myself doing that, I think, at a relatively young age, sort of saying, lamenting oh, back in my days we were doing this and we were involved in that. And, and really it's just understanding that the world is changing and if anything, you have to sort of appreciate the fact that the ratio of issues, challenges has increased. Every historical moment presents certain challenges and certain opportunities. The challenges we face are quite clear. We've created a set of political and economic institutions that actually are counter to our own moral system because some people like live in poverty so like how we live here a lot of people forget their dreams i see brother bread which bridge straight ahead yeah straight ahead how do you stay warm i got blankets how long have you been sleeping there oh wow a year more than that we are the forgotten america at the bottom of the economic pyramid you can see our town it's not as uh, lively as it used to be with uh, the businesses that are uh, kind of, uh, you can see the empty buildings. Those were people that made their way here and then they retired and the Indian people couldn't get economic loans to sustain it. We need to stand on our own two legs and we need to learn to go back to the personal responsibility that was the foundation for this country. Uh, our system was designed to be uh, individuals that had the, uh, the will, the desire, and the strength to uh, solve their own problems, to deal with issues, and be 
uh, responsible to their neighbors, and we've forgotten that message. Uh, I'm not against entitlements for the needy. I think entitlements for the greedy should be stopped. The needy don't get what they deserve in our country because the greedy gobble that up. I think there are things that uh, we've done, uh, perhaps legislatively, that do limit our uh, upward mobility, uh, that perhaps, uh, I guess I would say maybe middle class Americans didn't have these obstacles like enormous student loans for kids coming out of college and stuff in the past um, that have somewhat limited our ability to move up. One of the things that concerns me about opportunity is that generally it is associated with the idea of people being able to move up the socioeconomic ladder. Uh, my dad worked on a farm, and I'm working in a factory, which is a step up, and I'm sending my kids to college so that they'll be able to work in the front office, and so on. That, I think, is generally what people talk about or have in mind when they think about uh, opportunity. And unfortunately, that kind of mobility, upward mobility, is slowing down in this country. I think that more than half the people who live in America don't have any feeling of what it means to be American. That may be because of their economic situation and maybe they didn't, never had the opportunity to have freedom of thought because they don't have freedom of uh, wealth. What's happened is and we've really, we've morphed from a war on poverty to a war on people. Well, I think we see what it should mean to be an American whenever we have a massive crisis and people become extremely helpful to one another, only to retreat back into their hyper-individualism and me-ism as soon as the crisis is over. If we kept that on a full-time basis, uh, we would have a pretty marvelous country. We need to pay more attention to each other rather than to ourselves. We are essentially a pretty selfish country. We worry about, you know, what I'm going to get and what I'm going to do, instead of worrying about how we are going to get things or we are going to do things. Unfortunately, some of the younger people now, the attitude has kind of been like me, me, me. The people just don't, I'm sorry, excuse my language, they just don't give a shit anymore, they don't. My immediate, um, response is to like start thinking about policy and and politics and like yeah well it's all because of the two-party system or something like but mm -hmm. i don't think that's actually the case or rather i think that before like anything in the government or policy can change for the better and actually be effective i think that people just need to care about stuff more they're wrapped up in uh, their jobs and all these other distractions i mean you can get eighty thousand people to come to a sports event but you can hardly get a hundred people gathered together to to stand up for freedom don't care what president you put in there still not gonna make it right because it's nobody's pulling together everybody got their own agenda it's got to start with our politicians and good luck there <laughs> Well, I guess we're the government, but then we have to elect the people to run the government. And of course, a lot of times we don't elect, most of the times, I guess, we don't elect the right ones. It's just all politics, and it's not, I'm Congresswoman Corrine Brown, so, you know, but, but I think running for office. But once you're elected, when does the service begin and the politic end? Being American to me is service. How can we work together to make this a better country? That's a tough question. It's uh, because as soon as people get power, it corrupts them. And uh, they begin to be just like the ones that they replaced. So I don't know what the answer is. Um, I guess to be an American, you, you have to have faith.
Religion could be uh, a, hin a hindrance here. In fact, it might be, uh, it could be the major hindrance. We need to put religion back into its place where the founding fathers intended it to be, which is in the churches and synagogues and not in the halls of government. You know, we represent a, a sensibility of so many different ethnicities and uh, religions. Um, but in America, we have that freedom to, you know, whether you're Christian, Jew, Muslim, and what of the faith or of no faith. You know, that is part of the freedoms that we have in this great country to be able to feel that I am equal to, even if I am not a part of a majority. I think that some individuals have extreme um, opinions, and, and those individuals may think that um, currently, uh, America serves uh, or, or society uh, is equal to everyone, but maybe to everyone who looks uh, like they do. Uh, it's really not uh, equal to everyone uh, as it should be, um, but, but really equal uh, to everyone uh, as I look. Uh, maybe I look uh, as a, a white male, uh, and maybe my representation of, of all is just all who look like me, a, a, a white male. We have become a country of categories. We don't look at America as Americans. We look at Americans as blacks or women or gays or lesbians or whatever else. Let me put it as directly as I can. If you grew up expecting this to be a white man's country, you're going to be very nervous and angry about what the country is becoming. That, I think, is the source of a lot of our current political dyspepsia. People who think the country is, if you will, leaving them behind, turning them into the minority group. We understand that kind of anxiety and the anger that may be associated with it, but we have to find a way to address it. People can't even like look at each other. I can't go into an office building without them being like, what is he doing here? Because he looks different. Oh, he has art, not a terrorist. He's not a terrorist, he has art. But either way, our, heart, our minds are still scared because we're so used to, you know, it's fear. We're living in fear. At times, and we're beginning to see more of that now that it's just you know, becoming more apparent in the news every night when you see um, the look in America on the faces of people facing you know, the, the criminal justice system, whether it's on the street, you know, somebody who's committed a crime or supposedly committed a crime or standing in front of a courtroom. Um, at that point in time, I, I have to ask myself that question. Are we at the best at what we do? And this is, is this America for all America? And at that point, I've got to say, uh, uh, I don't believe so. Uh, that's part of the racism, and in, in many instances, part of the classism uh, that we have in, in this country, where based on your status and your ability to pay, that if you cannot hire uh, a lawyer and you have to depend upon public defenders, uh, who work for the system, that you're in very serious trouble and you're going to go to jail and you're going to serve time just because you cannot defend yourself. Uh, the, 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 the criminal justice system in this country is very unfair. I'm interested in our criminal justice system and through four years as a police officer, through almost three as an NIS agent and 22 in the FBI and then my experiences since then, it isn't a level playing field in our criminal justice system. When you look at the, you know, the mandate on sentencing for crack, crack cocaine versus powder cocaine, um, it is not fair. It is not the same for all people. We've got a history that has, that's a long history. And when you think about, you know, in 1866, we abolished slavery. One of the first laws that we put on the books within a year or two was loitering. Who was impacted the most then? And have we have continued to 
perpetuate laws that continue to impact certain people more than others. Our discussions about being an American have to do with being a patriot and all these sort of really jingoistic sort of perceptions. But we've got a history in this country uh, that came from, first of all, taking land from people who already lived here, enslaving people and bringing them over here. Um, so the, these are all part of the American experience. And it doesn't make you less of an American to examine that and think about that and consider that and you know delve into that. My mom died in the struggle. She died here. And they beat, they beat her up and beat her to death. I was young when my mom died. But I know she died in the struggle trying to do something for her. Everybody else. And they killed him. The three American Holocaust, the destruction of indigenous peoples, African slavery, and the U.S. assault on the developing world, especially post-World War II. Those three Holocausts created millions of corpses. They destroyed entire cultures. Those are Holocaust-level crimes. And until the United States can come to terms with that, I don't think we can ask the question, what should it mean to be an American in the present? Uh, there's a moral reckoning that this country has never gone through. And as a result, here we sit as the most affluent and powerful country in the history of the world, literally the richest society that has ever existed. And we have no sense of how that came to be or what debts we owe, what crimes we committed for that condition to come about. And in fact, the entire American system is designed to prevent that. The educational system, the universities, it's mostly a system of myth creation. Unfortunately, our education system has now become very uh, profit-oriented. And it's basically we're cutting our own foot off because if we do not have educated uh, next generation, what we're doing to ourselves is we're making ourselves or forcing ourselves to become third world. We don't tune ourselves into the real issues in the world. You know, we're very concentrated on ourselves. We're more concentrated on who's going to be the next winner of American Idol as opposed to who is your state representative? Who is your district representative? Who represents you in Congress? Who represents you in the Senate? Do you have a rapport with these people? And you say, oh, well, that's a senator. I, no, they come down, you can talk with them, you can interact with them, but we don't, but we truly don't. Uh, I think there needs to be um, more engagement. Uh, right now, people are blindly just following, you know, uh, in politics, they're blindly just partisan. Uh, they don't know why they support things they do. Why are you a Republican? Like everybody, it, it's, it's not cool to study political science. We've made civic education so boring that we turn off people and prevent them, right? And they disengage and then don't vote. And part of it is because we've stripped down civics education to being about the mechanics of our democracy. How does a bill become a law? How, the rules about how many states have so many votes and representations. We've stripped from it the topics and things we care about. Um, so in elections, the things we care about are controversial often. Uh, issues, issues such as abortion and, and affirmative action. And I think because we're afraid of children's conversations about those difficult issues, we are afraid to let children talk about what we do to help the poor, what we do to make sure African Americans um, are included in our, rep our, our democracy more effectively. We should start in the school system. I mean, in, in, in middle school, in fact, there are those who say that you are no, you're never too young to learn about racism. And I know that parents cringe and horror. Oh, I don't want my child to know anything about segregation back during that time. Yeah, but you want them to know about integration. You want to know how we hold hands and sing kumbaya together. You want them to do that in elementary school, but you don't want them to understand 
what really happened in American history. I think that any teenager person my age with social media knows what's going on. Definitely, because that's where I learn about most of the stuff are from my parents, you know. But I think that even kids who have parents who feel that they shouldn't learn about these kind of like social issues going on, they still probably know if they own like a Twitter or an Instagram or even like a TV. As those problems become harder and harder to deny, there's a reaction to intensify one's commitment to the systems. As long as we adhere to the system, we'll be okay. If we ever divert from it, then we're gonna go to hell. This notion that instead of being able to critically self-reflect about how we have defined American, uh, we're gonna hold on to it tighter and we're gonna denounce anybody who dares to challenge it. Uh, once the Cold War was over, we thought it was going to be all over. 1989, was it, or whatever. And it, it's actually getting worse, <laughs> right? For the new younger generation coming into the 21st century, there's tremendous challenges here to save our country uh, and even to put the world in order. And we can't do it alone, but we can at least work on our country first. Um, the thing about America is you can't force people to be something. That's what makes America great. You can't force something. You can't force a person to, to suddenly become interested in something. I think it's just we need an awakening, like a self-awakening. Pull our head out of our ass. I mean, we can't move forward unless we realize how far we've come by looking back. We need to go backwards and analyze what made America what made it strong, what bonded its people. And, uh, you know, our eyes are put in front of our heads to, to look and go forward. Our brain is seated behind our eyes to give us guidance of where to look, where to go. So how do we go from the way it is for more people to the way it should be from your perspective? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm a little pressured. I don't know. But I think that um, doing something different might be a good idea. It's love. Love the person next to you, in front of you, behind you, the poor person, the person that looks different from you. There's no need to hate one another. There's no need to show dislike or mistreat one another. We have to love one another for us to come to the next level. To be gentle and calm and to like someone. How do you show liking someone? What does that look like? Like maybe you hug someone or you, or if somebody feels scared, you tell them it's okay. Communication, understanding, being together, sharing things with each other and trying to get along. Like you just meeting me and I'm just meeting you. We are not here to fight each other. Are we? What should American be? There's a huge self-education aspect to it, which is knowing that you're getting part of the story in, in traditional schooling, you have to expand upon it. You've got to talk to people, you've got to talk to experts and say, how do I know more about this experience? How do I learn more about this group that I don't know much about? Because they might not be as quote unquote far as you think they are. Education, I think that people need to be educated about other cultures, religions, sexual preferences. I think doing that early on in the schools um, is the only thing I can think of that will change minds and, and hearts. I just feel that education um, is a big factor in how culture is created. And I think culture is a bigger factor in, um, in how people act collectively. I think it has a bigger impact than policies ever will. And then I also think we have to be clear about the ideals. So you do have to talk about um, the potential of democracy uh, to do right by its citizens as a form of government. I think that maybe, hopefully, the answer is politically. Well, there's only so much non-action that are, that's going to be stood for by the population. And I would think that if a uh, congressman doesn't finally get something done, the congressman should be looking for a new job. We just fight 
and we don't get along, we don't meet, so we have to find, I guess this whole conversation is great because it's making me realize we have to find the middle. Fighting is kind of stupid though. There are other ways to solve problems besides fighting. What would you suggest? Sir? What would you suggest? Dialogue. Civic dialogue has significantly broken down, particularly in the last decade or two decades. So when people disagree with each other, the American way, in my view, would be to disagree with each other in a civil way. Um, and try to see if we can bridge our differences, and if we can't, then we agree to disagree. But work within the rule of law to resolve our differences. The problem is you have very partisan people who are the loudest voices, you know, whether it's the left or the right. If you're not part of their group, then you're not American. One of the things that people do to limit discourse is to say, well, that's un-American. And the most American thing in the world to do is to express your opinion. So when people express opinions that are counter to somebody else's, well, that's un-American. I, I think that's probably not the case. It's probably the most American thing you can do is to say, I don't agree with you. I disagree. I, I want to talk about another perspective. A lot of it is uh, challenging your own beliefs, whatever they are, that uh, you know, I think people often surround themselves by like-minded individuals, no matter what end of the spectrum they're on. So I think constantly challenging yourself uh, to figure out how you can help and not feel just lost sort of in the masses is what we can do to change things. Just, I guess, leaning into discomfort, like even this, I was like, oh shoot, what is he gonna ask me? And I think conversations with people who are different than you are like that too, because maybe they'll call you out on something and maybe their experience is in your mind better or worse than yours and you start to feel uncomfortable. So it's easy to find conversations with people who have similarity. But if you wanna have a really shared American experience, that's gonna mean talking to people who have a completely different life than you. Being an American should mean being able to dialogue and participate in dialogue with others. Yeah. Yeah. Without action, there is no hope. It's true. Uh, you just gotta do what you feel is right. Uh, if you feel something isn't right, you gotta stand up. You gotta have the balls to tell people, hey, that's not right. We gotta demand it as the people. We need to speak up. And that's uh, what we're not doing. It's very, very hard to for one person or even a small group of people as we've seen, like, you know, you have your million man marches and all these other things um, that just don't really affect the world the way it should, so to speak. It's just, that's almost, it's almost like an impossible task, but that's kind of the American dream too, is that we, it might be possible. I think we have to face the fact that there are probably problems without solutions. That is solutions in the framework we understand today. And yet still commit to the struggle to try and make the world a better place. It's not just our politicians, it's you and me. It's all of us. Are we gonna be a part of that change that we wanna see happen in America? It has to be a real core granular a process that has to happen with each one of us individually. It just takes people feeling that they are empowered to be able to do this. The 21st century is, is going to be is a threat to democracy and freedom all over the world and even in our own society and in other Western nations where it has been well established. It's under threat. And I think, you know, let's wake up and let's fight for it. I think it's an important question. I think it's... Um, I think I would like to read the answers or see the answers to the questions from people who have a different political bent than I do. You know, if I were asked that question every day, I think I'd be a better person every day because it made, it made me more aware. Just by asking the question, it starts a dialogue and mm -hmm. I think that is really important and maybe that's part of the part of the solution that you have to first think about what something should be in order to make it happen. And we're talking about people and people of all, of all types, of all natures. And of course, none of, none of us is perfect and no system is perfect. But that we can still say should be and with the hope that 
it will be. I grew up believing in Frank Capra movies. Mr. Deeds goes to town, things like that. Uh, Mr. Smith goes to Washington particularly. And I believe that we should have a situation where right always wins. We don't always, but I'm trying. What I want to add is tell people that we don't have to do this no more. This is over with, right? This is over with. It's freedom. And freedom ain't free. Are there good people left in the world? I think there's good people. And if we fight and fight the bad, and we're the good Americans I know that we are, we are going to 100% change that opinion that there's no good people left in the world. And America is full of just scary stuff. There is good in America still. And that's what we were born on. I think it still thrives today. Identities as American change across all kinds of background characteristics. In psychology, we call that intersectionality. It's not the same experience to be a woman if you're an African-American woman, if you're a lesbian. It's not the same experience to be American um, across different kinds of backgrounds. So absolutely what people think of changes. Uh, and that's that diversity issue. We come back to saying there's no right one right way to be American, to feel American. And it is the conversations with each other about how we see American being American that's fascinating and that enrich us personally and enrich our perspective as a country and can en enrich our goals and our thinking about how to govern, our uh, govern ourselves. So inviting conversations from all those people uh, who feel American in different ways is such a great thing to do. We should be thinking not in a sort of very rigid way of how this is supposed to work, but we should be thinking, well, what do we actually want people to uh, aspire towards? And in my opinion, should is inclusive of a lot of voices, not just my voice, not just one person's voice, but uh, as you're doing right now, is talking to people across the country and asking them what should it be. This idea that tomorrow will be different from today and also that tomorrow should be different from today. No, my kids should not live the same way I lived. No, the country should not look the same way 50 years from now as it looks today. And those, the people who I guess worry me are the people who say nothing should change. Or another form of that expression is we have to take our country back. Take the country back to what? No, we have to take the country forward. I don't think we are always necessarily the freest country, but we have this enormous gift, this, this privilege which, which we've been given, which is we've grown up in a very peaceable world with a lot of material wealth. And the question is, what are we going to do with it? Are we going to go shopping? Or are we going to aim higher? And I hope that uh, certainly those people who, those unfortunate souls who happen to be watching this video, that <laughs> we will aim higher. I don't know, that's a, I have to think about that. To be an American, hmm. We can live the way we want, do mostly what we want. How does that sound? This coming month, I'll be 98 years old. And I'm having a wonderful time. What should it mean to be an American? Boy, that is a wonderful question. You may use this in all likenesses and all words and or 
other things associated with my name, likeness, and words in any form, digital or otherwise, new technologies to eventually be e exhibited and invented and in all worldwide, all contexts and all nations, including planets not yet colonized by human beings. Does that cover it? Taking the good with the bad, balancing these things out, and saying, as millions of immigrants have said over the years, on balance, this is a hell of a place to be. When I read the preamble and I say, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, when I read we the people, why should I not think that we the people means me too? What should it mean to be an American? Oh wow, that is a good question. A second to think about that. I could almost think of myself as giving a course which started with that question, right? Then you'd get these answers and uh, somebody would say, oh, I don't think you should use the word, some students over here would say, I don't think you should use the word should. And then I'd say, what about that, folks? Do you think we shouldn't use the word should? The question we should ask ourselves in America is how can we keep making it great? We're a great country that always aspires to be greater. It started with our founding fathers. Listen, those guys didn't write the book on it. They just started the conversation. You know, I guess it should just mean, I don't know. That's a lot. That's, that's a real tough question. <laughs> that's a tough question to answer. It might that's like an all day question. <laughs> wow, that's deep. This is a really hard question. That was not fair. <laughs> Good question. Can't answer. Um, and loving everybody. What should it mean to be an American? Jeez. Sure. As soon as I walk away, I'll be like, "Oh, this would be good to talk about." But. Is there anything you'd like to add relative to what it should mean to be an American? I plan on starting sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs>